Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, your host for today's episode. Joining me in today's episode is Dr. Brent Sexton, herd veterinarian in the Central Prairie region with the Mashoffs. Brent, thanks for joining us. Do you want to give the audience a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah, it's my pleasure. So, uh, Brent Sexton, uh, originally from Rockwell City in Northwest Iowa. Uh, I grew up on a, a row crop operation and uh, got exposed to hog production through the 4 H and FFA programs. Uh, went to Iowa State for undergrad and then veterinary school. And uh, originally, kind of went to go with large, mixed large animal, but opportunities were always available on the swine side of things. And uh, Ended up taking a, a swine exclusive job with Pipestone initially out of college, was there for, or out of vet school, was there for a, a year and a half and then transitioned to the mash offs uh, where I've been since uh, about Thanksgiving of 2019. So going on two and a half years now there and it's been quite the ride. So been having a lot of fun. Very good. Well, and I've, I've enjoyed knowing you through the years, Brent. Um, you and I have got a lot of similarities in our pathway towards becoming veterinarians. You know, you were, we were both interns at the mash-offs, uh, both, both employees, either current or former at the mash-offs. Uh, it's been, been a joy to get to know you through the years and watch your career. And I, I know um, from my own experience at the mash-offs a lot about your role there as a herd veterinarian. Um, you've got to help farm solve problems. And, and I know you had a, an experience with PED recently, hit a couple of farms, and you know there's not many bigger problems for farms than PED, unfortunately. You want to talk a little bit about how you kind of use that, that opportunity to, to do some research on PED management strategies and specifically using vaccines in the face of those outbreaks on sow farms? Yeah, absolutely. So for anyone who's who's not aware, the, the Central Prairie region that I operate out of, we have several sow farms in the Pike County area of, Il of Western Illinois. And so when we initially broke um, some of our farms in this area, you know, we were, we were under a pretty urgent um, need to get this under control. Uh, you know, we've got in the neighborhood 12, 14 sow farms right in that kind of area of the of the state and obviously lots of connections by the time you you know have maintenance and production and veterinarians and such so um really really quite urgent that we that we try and mitigate this um outbreak as quickly as possible so uh, kind of the necessity driving innovation uh we were challenged you know what tools are available that we can uh, hopefully control this, shorten our closures, shorten the impact, decrease shedding, that kind of thing. And so we opted to uh, to try a vaccination uh, of the sow farm, uh, of the PD sow farm. So we broke four farms that were continuous flow farms right in the um, Pike County area and opted to vaccinate them uh, pre ferro with different PD vaccines. And that allowed us to, in our mind, shorten our duration of, of shedding and, and how severe the infections were. You want to talk, Brent, a little bit about how you use the vaccine in those outbreaks? Did you have a specific timing in which you administered it? Yes. So we, uh, if, if you do much research on the PED vaccine, you'll find that there's not a there's not a, a tremendous amount of research out there of sow farm closures in acute outbreaks. There's a few that are, you know, gilts and their immune response. And then there's some on uh, sow farms with endemic disease. So, you know, several months of being positive. So our thoughts was, um, seeing as, you know, it's not a live virus that's being uh, injected. So, but they'd have wild type exposure. We opted to basically immediately, um, we started vaccinating at about two weeks pre ferro That allowed us to, um, you know, we did our euthanized, our piglets in the farrowing house, created that kind of window. And then we also, we started boostering at five weeks for a few weeks. And so that basically what it ended up being was the first two weeks, there was nothing because we had euthanized piglets. The second, about three weeks, we had sows farrowing that had a single dose and then the next three weeks after that we had sows that were 
double booster with uh, the vaccine. And I really don't know if that has a, a tremendous value or not. Um, like I said, we were, we were in pretty, um, we're acting with a pretty high sense of urgency there. And so knowing that, you know, is that the ideal? No, but given prices and given the severity and what was at risk, we thought, you know, if someone's good, more is better. And uh, so so tried that with the hopes that we'd have a, a three week, basically a full farrowing house full of double vac- vaccinated sows, hyper immunized piglets and create kind of a second window there. And then we can uh, continued with a single dose vaccination of the piglets or of the sows at, at that kind of one, two week pre farrow. Several of these were group um, group house. So we weren't going through and shooting them exactly at seven days. We were trying to aim kind of around 10 days for the, for the group. I think that's an important distinction because a, a lot of folks um, are, are using just one dose of PED vaccine pre ferro. Um, so it sounds like you, for the purposes of your study, use two doses pre ferro at least for a period of time and the kind of peak of challenge and then went back to that one dose program later on. Am I, am I paraphrasing that correctly? Yep, that would be correct. Very good. What did you measure in terms of uh, trying to see if this worked or didn't work, Brent? Yeah, so what we measured was um, we looked at pre-wean mortality, then the the pigs weaned per sow um, as as probably the, the two biggest, and then the third one was the length of closure. So our closures were completed when we had gotten six negative weeks of testing with 30 weaned pigs swabbed individually and tested in pools of five. And, and so that time frame from initial outbreak to the, the sixth negative test was our, our closure length. Um, I think it's probably important to know that, you know, this was, uh, this is all kind of a retrospective study, right? So I, I don't, I guess in case anyone's wants to be critical here at, oh, well, you can't say correlation causation and such. Well, sure. I'm aware. Uh, and, and, but I think this is still a, a valuable in the sense that I think we, I think we were able to provide a, a fairly good analysis of, of what was observed. So understanding it's not randomized and such, but uh, still was, was valuable for, for us, certainly as a company, and I think for the, the industry as, as a reference or things to be aware of um, in terms of what we saw, um, you know, really, the, the closure was probably the most dramatic. We we shortened our length um, by over uh, by greater than five weeks for farms utilizing these PEDs. And this was, I guess I'll back up just a little bit in terms of how we set up kind of the secondary study here, was we took four, um, four of our sow farms that broke and compared it to uh, several sow farms that had broken previously, and then just compared on those three different results. Yeah, we, we had a, yeah, like I said, five weeks less for the, the closure length. Um, and we also saw some decreases in our pig premium mortality as well as our pigs wean per sow, although that wasn't quite as consistent. And then when you dig into that, there's things like timing of the breaks, some of the different interventions that maybe weren't quite as well controlled. Um, but, you know, I, I, I do think we come around with a, a nearly 4% improvement on premium mortality, uh, specifically in the late recovery period. And I would attribute a fair bit of that because we were out of closure and we were able to exit McRebel sooner. Very good. Well, Brent, I, I know the audience is probably interested in the, the applied take-home information. Can you, can you boil it down to the bottom line for us? If, if you had a herd that's naive that breaks with PED tomorrow, how would you use the vaccine? Uh, and is it any different now than you know before you did this work? Yeah, I would say based on what we had observed here and then based on what we observed like visually on the farms, I, I feel pretty comfortable that that a vaccine has the ability to reduce the severity and duration of the of the infection. And so especially when you have cases where there's, um, you know, where we were in at that time of year with really high piglet prices. And then, you know, obviously the like we talked about the large concentration of pigs in that area, you know, I think those are, are two factors I would really say, like, yeah, this is this is worth giving it a shot. Let's try this, you know, and, and that's how I would approach it. Would you do the two-dose program, Brent, or just the one-dose program? 
I think I would do the two dose program again, except I would probably be a, a better veterinarian and I would try and get a little bit better data on, on what we're seeing there, potentially looking to, you know, what kind of antibody response can you measure and things like that, just to see, all right, do we think we got a benefit out of it or not? But it worked quite our experience was really positive, and so I think I would be hesitant to, to mess with it too much until I learned more. Understood. Well, and Brent, uh, from one veterinarian to, the, to another, I wish you the best in not having to answer that question anytime in the near future. How about that? Uh, that sounds good. Very good. Well, thank you, Brent. I really appreciate uh, you coming on and sharing that information. Um, and to everyone out there in our audience, thank you very much for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinehealthblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so that you won't miss out on the next episode. For Dr. Brent Sexton, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks for listening and see you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com. And we would love to take a look at your research. Mm-hmm.